So we've got to solve, we've got to graph each of these lines and then see where they intersect. And where they intersect is our solution. So we're going to graph each one on our grid and then find where the lines cross and then that's our solution, right? So the trick is to just take one line at a time and hopefully by now you guys know how to graph a line. So we'll just take the 4x plus y plus 4 and we're just going to graph that. So what I want you guys to do is um, solve for y first of all and then do a little table and plot the points. So you got to solve for y. So we have y plus 4x. So we want y in its own. And the complication in our life right now is that there's a 4x here. We've got to get rid of that 4x. So how do we get rid of the 4x? Minus. Minus 4x. Correct. Yeah. So subtract 4x from both sides. And so we'll have y equals 4 minus 4x. Or you could write it as negative 4x plus 4. So your slope is negative 4. Your y-intercept is positive 4. I mean, some students like to get the 4 and then they go over 1, down 4, over 1, down 4, over 1, down 4. You can do that as well, but um, I'll just go over making a little table and plugging in some points. So I've made up a table out of nowhere, and I'm going to now do more magic. I'm going to create numbers out of nowhere. I'm going to plug 0 in for x. Why? Because because that'll give me one point on the line. That'll actually give me the y-intercept, which is nice. So negative 4 times 0 plus 4. So I'm just going to calculate this point first of all. And that gives me 0 plus 4, which is? 4. Yeah. So we have 0. 4. x is 0, y is 4. So we've got one point on this line, right? And then the next step is to get some more points on this line. Um, and you can pick anything you want. I'm going to pick, just for fun, I'm just going to go negative 1 and positive 1. But you guys can pick any numbers you like. You want to keep them close to 0, probably, because they want to be around here somewhere on your grid, right? You don't want to put in like 100 or something for x. It'd be all the way over here, well, over to the wall, and it would be able to graph it, right? So, but negative 4 times negative 1 plus 4, and then negative 4 times positive 1 plus 4. So negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. And positive 4 plus 4 is 8. You okay with that? So negative 1, positive 8 is there. And two points is enough to graph a straight line. I'm just going to do three just to make sure they're all in a row. If they're not in a row and I made a mistake. But negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And then plus 4 gives gives 0, right? And so this point is x is 1, y is 0. x is 1, y is 0 is there, right? And you guys can do three more points if you want to. It's fine. But the point is you've got to graph this equation. Turn this equation into a straight line. That's the trick. So I've got to get my ruler here, which is actually a CD case, and draw a line through the points. And there we go, right? So I've graphed the first equation. And now I need to graph the other equation. And then I, and then we figure out where the, the, the two lines meet, and then that's our answer. OK, then? Yes. So the next one, again, we have to solve for y so that we can make our little table. So solve that for y. So subtract 3x. Track 3x. Good job. So the trick is that we actually have negative y equals 3 minus 3x or negative 3x plus 3. 
You guys can write down three minus three X if you want, it's the same thing. But a lot of students forget about this negative. You get that negative comes down, doesn't go away. That makes sense? And let me give you an example, see if it helps. But like, let's say you had something like, um, instead of 3x, let's say we had 30 minus 27 equals 3. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. And let's say I subtracted 30 from both sides, just for fun. I just made something up. I just made it up just for fun. And so on the right, what's 3 minus 30? It would be negative. Negative. 27. Yeah, 7. Right? And can I just write down 27 here? Or did I make this? No, there's still, there's still a negative there. There's still a negative, right? And see how that makes sense now? Yes. Because 20, negative 27 equals negative 27. Or you could say negative 27 equals 3 minus 30. What's that? 3 minus 30. So it would be the same thing. Yeah. Negative 27 equals, the way I did it, negative 30 plus three, right? Anyway, that's yeah. kind of the same thing, only here we've got X's and Y's. But if you guys get confused with the numbers, plug in number, confused with letters, plug in numbers that make sense to you, and it should all make sense. Because this number stays a negative, like our negative 27 should have stayed a negative 27. Otherwise, we would have made a mistake, right? Yes. So negative Y is in fact negative one Y. It's negative one times Y. But we need positive y, not negative. And to get positive y, we actually have to divide by negative 1. That make sense? Yes. And I'm just going to do a simple example here. Like, if I wanted to turn this into a positive 27, I would have to divide by negative 1. Because positive 20, negative 27 over negative 1 is positive 27, right? But it should actually be dividing all of these numbers by negative one. Does that make sense? Because that would be positive 30 minus three. Now, does that equation make sense? 27 equals 30 minus three? Yes. When I divided everything by negative one, then it all worked out, didn't it? Yes. If you, and some students say, I'll just divide one of the numbers by negative one, and then it's a mistake. So we've got to divide all of the numbers by negative one. So y equals negative 3x over negative 1, positive 3x. 3 over negative 1, minus 3. So y equals 3x minus 3. You okay with that? Yes. And now we construct a little table, and we make up some numbers out of thin air and plug it in for x, and then we graph this line. But I'll ask you all to make sure you plug in 0, because that's the y-intercept. So let's always start there. 3 times 0 minus 3 is 0 minus 3, which is that. So we okay with the first point? Yes. That's an important one, the y-intercept. So 0, negative 3 should be right there. 0, negative 3. That's the point. Do you have that? Yes. Right. So then we'll get a few more points. Um, and just for fun, I'm going to plug in like, no, oh, let's plug in negative 1 and 1 again, just for fun, right? So I'm going to go 3 times negative 1 minus 3, 3 times 1 minus 3. 3 times negative 1 minus 3, 3 times 1 minus 3, right? 3 times negative 1, negative 3 minus 3, which is? Zero. So negative 3, I'm in debt $3. Oh, six. Then, then I subtract $3. I'm in debt $3, and then I subtract $3. Now I'm in debt how many? Negative 6. Right. And then this one is 3 minus 3. So this one is? Zero. There you go. Yep. So our next points are negative 1, negative 6. So negative 1, negative 6. And then we have, um, let me just put this down here. There we go. That makes sense. 
And then we have one, zero. One, zero. And that's the same point as I was already on the green line. So draw, we've got our three red points. We're gonna draw a little red line here. And then we find out where the two lines meet. So what we did is we graphed both equations. We got a blue line, a red line, and where do the lines intersect? One. Yep. No, what? Yep. X is one. Okay, yeah. Y yeah. is zero. Yep. So our point of intersection is this point here, and that's one, zero. And um, let's check that. And I think we already did, because if we look at our tables, we have on this equation, um, on this equation, we have x is 1, y is 0, right? And on this equation, we have x is 1, yep. y is 0 also. So that point yes. fits into both equations. That's a point of intersection, and that solves both equations. Okay, that? Yes. 